Clicked a couple buttons, made me rich. It's the type of shit that make them pissed. You should see the house that I'ma get. You should see the whip I didn't rent. Cupcake up the money on my mind, and I hate a wake up. I need a second guy in the day. I make up what you do in your life reservation. I'm taking everything I said mine. Ah. So I was editing, and then I saw that, and I was like, dude, I forgot to mention, like, if any of you guys do music, um, production, beats, you make songs, anything, we're, get, we're cold, okay? Like we said, hit us up. We got anything. If any of you guys do anything creative in arts too, uh, even painting, arts, painting, artwork, anything, hit me up. I got something for you. It's kind of related to TTF, not really, but talk to me, okay? That's... We, we everywhere, but let's get to stocks now, okay? Yeah. All right, so I got busy freestyling. I have the other video made, but I was going to go over this one and answer your guys' questions that we had here. So people had them. Let's answer some stock one. The first one, let's talk about dividends and protecting your long-term investment. That is a good question, uh, and that starts with the beginning before the crash, you know. My long-term portfolio is diversified. You know, it's set up, I do have a lot of tech holdings and where I made my mistake during this, I didn't trim as they were growing. Uh, I did trim, but not really towards the peak of where they're at, but protecting yourself here starts with prior, you know, and this is a good example as to why you should balance it. And that goes to, you know, the effects of one market on another where, you know, value will go up when other stuff go down. So I may have lost money on like Facebook and Amazon, eh, but long term, I got Amazon at 300, Facebook around 30 or 40. But, you know, so I lose money, you don't want to lose profit. However, at the same time, you know, it, it's down from there. But it, and it didn't get made up, you know, my Johnson and Johnson, my Procter Gamble, those didn't make up for me as much as what I lost. However, that's where it starts. And now the next step from here is aiming for the high dividend stocks because stocks that were yielding like Ford is a good example. Auto stocks are great for that because they've lost substantial amounts of their price. So that dividend they offer, they're now yielding a lot higher. But the risk now especially with dividends and protecting long-term investments like bonds and even corporate credit. People are worried right now with after GE and what happened with that corporate grade credit. People are worried about that. Power, Matthew Martinez, you already know. We own that. Um, so let's see. Why, not sure why there's so many dislikes. Rejecting the thought of how politics really does impact present and future business events. So right now I'm getting it is there isn't really much information on why this constant decline is happening to oil. One thing for sure though, we're kept in low since the criticism, Donald. Yes, 100%. Now the Khashoggi thing is one part of it that I think is important, but to put the direct correlation as to what's going on now, it's very hard to say. However, now... The information on oil, yeah, there isn't much. People are just saying, some are saying supply, some are bringing up OPEC, but to explain a 14, 15 day constant decline entering into this bear market, there hasn't been anything enough. And that's why sanctions on Iran, sanctions in coming into Saudi Arabia, that is on play historically with, with what has happened with oil. So that's kind of where I'm worried about it, but you're, you're pretty spot on. And now I think that Khashoggi thing is something being overlooked by a lot of people or we, you know, we, it's hard to really fathom what it could. But like I'm saying, if that does change Saudi relations with the United States, that could change the oil market forever. You know, it, it will bring um, a scenario we have not seen in trade and oil in the United States in a long, a long, very, very long time. Can you talk about Tesla? Uh, yes. Hang on, stocks prices, Tesla, because trade Tesla with China and Trump, I believe. Read the news. Um, is that really, yeah, they lost gross money. They were so cars, so I don't understand stocks down 3%, even if all the market is down today. So that's a good question. Tesla, I might make a separate video on that. I like them. I don't like them. I go back and forth. But I think with Tesla right now, there is what we're saying with slashing the prices on the Chinese market. That's one thing, and that highlights trade wars, and that's kind of an auto industry type thing too because that's what happened gm and ford they got hit with that too but now tesla i think a lot of people are missing there's a big effect you could go look at nvidia and chip makers and there's a lot of auxiliary companies related to tesla that have been doing bad and i think partly just the technology itself is you know i saw nvidia go down in the chip makers i think that's somewhat weighing on tesla believe it or not but overall even with tesla down today if you're only looking at it today, I wouldn't be too concerned. That news is one thing, but looking at Tesla on like a, 
a bigger, I gotta put my password in. Well, I think I could still pull it up. Yeah, I had it. I was gonna make the video on it before I left. But overall, like on the day, like it, it has overperformed, you know? So when the market was dropping, it went up and, it, and it's held its gain. So this move isn't, it's bad to see it break, but then this could also be signifying broader market weakness as opposed to just Tesla, if that makes sense for today. But I think Tesla, they're doing better than, than anything. I, actually, I think that my big thing I'm worried about is how chip makers and other companies related like NVIDIA will affect Tesla and their performance. Is there some historical patterns I play around this time of the year? I noticed that it's surging. Can you make a call and drop? There is, but there isn't. And you know, that's a great question um, because the historically we're at a weird spot right now what the market's doing and around around this time frame it's common starting august september october for china to slow down and stuff like that however we're just at a very unique time so it's hard to say that's what i was worried about with the thanksgiving video i made yesterday was that i was scared we could you know we go outside history and things escalate but we saw oil dropped and the volume still wasn't there so that was historically there the only thing historically i'm waiting for is the santa claus rally you know kind of coming into close and then historically a lot of people will sell for taxes and that will also be more dependent too on what trump is going to be you know any other tax policy or potential shift so historically i think the only thing i'm reading right now is that christmas rally and i need more data uh but i'll make a video definitely i'm gonna definitely make a video on that i was talking about it earlier on the webinar today i like it uh, price per unit decrease in japan specifically mm, um that's see so that's a good you we did talk about that but not this so i like that you brought up japan japan is very important i think i need to make more videos on there for you guys because in relation to you know japan and just the broader world in general, Japan has an important factor. So them decreasing that, it will signify weakness in the currency of the JPY. And if that starts to give way, that is one of my last indicators I haven't seen move too much. But if that starts to move, that could be something there. But I think Asia in general, it's a, it's a slowdown there. And by them even lowering prices there, I'm, I think it's just highlighting everything that's going on in that side of the world. Um, it's slowing down and they need to do something about it. Let's see, a video comparing Forex and the stock market. So I have it pretty much Forex and stocks. You know, you see all the stuff I'm talking about. You'll see some of the global videos I'm gonna put out, but there's a lot. Stocks are easier to trade off of. You don't need leverage more opportunity just essentially my thing with forex there's not enough information unless you are trading billions of dollars or and have access to information at a deeper level or know how to interpret like i, I could i would be a killer forex trader that's the thing like i have all the skills to trade forex like a savage you know i would be i'd be amazing at it i but the thing is i use forex to take those plays and play stocks and assets because there's more money there i'm more likely to make a lot more money with a lot less risk seeing those moves in the forex instead of trying to play and scalp that shit i could i could translate that to an asset and make a lot of money so yeah that's pretty simple i'll leave it there those are your guys' questions i love them um let me know if you have more i shot my other videos uh, i think i might shoot one more today but i think no no i already have it yeah i already have them done uh, and i won't post them but maybe you guys give me good ones we'll keep going but i love y'all stay in school apply take the free course don't smoke jewel bye